Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Kinga and I started making YouTube videos right after my divorce to document for myself and my closest friends how I am reinventing myself and my whole life. If you're not a friend but you still found this video, feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel. My biggest help on this journey was meditation and conscious manifesting. If you want to know more about me and what I do, visit the link in the description. In this video, I want to tell you a story on how I became a radio host, how I got my own radio show in my early 20s back home in Budapest. I want to tell you the whole process, hoping that it could shine some light on how this whole manifesting or law of attraction works in reality. I used a phrase in the beginning of this video, conscious manifesting. What I refer to is um, when you have an intention, a desire, a clear vision of what you want, and you feel your way into it. You focus emotionally to a feeling state of already having or living that desire. It's that simple. When I was a kid, this whole process was not as conscious. I mean, the visualization part of it was, but I wasn't visualizing with the intention to manifest something. I was visualizing, which I called daydreaming, because I loved doing it, because that was my way to escape reality that I didn't like. It's like when you're reading a, a good book, a good fiction, and it pulls you into the story and you just forget about your whole external world. So since I hated my external world and the circumstances I was uh, growing up in, I was daydreaming all the time. Also, I spent a lot of time alone, and uh, that was a daydreaming was a form of entertainment for me. And I think I became really good at it. And it just stayed with me throughout my adulthood. And uh, I still benefit highly from it, you know, from having this vivid imagination. But it also has its, its disadvantages because I'm pretty good at creating very scary scenarios in my head that look very realistic to me. But I know that others would laugh at it or think that it's childish, you know, like I can have imaginary fears such as not going to the deep murky water to swim because what if a monster grabs my leg and pulls me down? So when I was visualizing something back when I was younger and I liked it to a point where I wanted to bring it to my reality, I prayed. I was a religious, a spiritual kid, which back then meant the same to me. Now, I wouldn't call myself religious, but I still call myself spiritual. So every time I wanted or needed something, I would connect to this higher guidance that I called God, and I was expressing my desires, you know? It looked more like begging, to be honest. And I remember I always felt so connected. I felt really heard and listened to, and I opened my heart and just let everything pour out of it. I remember I would get really emotional during praying as well. When I was asking for something, I would really feel my way into that thing. And I would ask for it with so much passion and desire that I would get really emotional about it. Like sometimes I would cry, but not cry because I didn't have that thing. It was more like cry out of how much I love that thing. So I had no sense of lack which I now know was a very good move from my part. I didn't know it back then. Luckily, I just did it the right way instinctively. And even the whole, I want something, so I'm gonna pray for it with emotions thing was, was not conscious, you know? Like, I wasn't doing it because I knew that this is how it worked. I mean, yes, with time, I kind of figured that, hey, there, there's a connection between a fee me feeling a certain way and then asking for it, and then that thing becoming my reality. But that took a long while for me to understand. And apart from asking for that thing with emotions during praying, I also did the daydreaming, which I told you about, like many times throughout the day, which was just me, you know, like laying on bed on, or sitting at my desk and just escaping reality and imagining myself or the situation and circumstances that I wanted. I didn't dream big though. What a shame. I never thought that anything was possible. It was more like I found a situation that I liked or I saw something or someone that inspired me and I imagined myself doing or having or, or being that myself. So there was this self-limiting belief over the whole thing, unfortunately. So um, daydreaming, but kind of keeping it realistic. If I had a kid myself, I would encourage her or him to daydream with the belief that anything is possible. 
Okay, so let's get to the radio host job, right? So I moved to London at the at the age of 19 and that's when I learned English and I was working and studying there and then I moved back to Budapest after a couple of years and I instinctively started to hang out with the English speaking expat community. I even started an English stand-up comedy club in Budapest and I was bringing comedians from the UK and the US and I became good friends with this British guy called Sam. Sam was living in Budapest and Sam spoke a beautiful posh British English. And since I was hanging out with the experts, I was also introduced to English magazines, newspapers published in Budapest, and soon a radio show done by two Hungarians who spoke excellent English. It was an informative cultural program about Hungary, the history, recommending different events and services to the expat community. And I just enjoyed the vibe of the two presenter, Mark and Jennifer, talking for hours about interesting stuff. And I soon started to fantasize about me being Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, you're watching this, I love you. Um, so I was daydreaming about myself having um, a radio show in English. I never thought that uh, it could become reality since I had no background in radio, no contact in the industry. I don't think my English was good enough for that either, but it was, it was just daydreaming, you know? And you're allowed to do that. For my own pleasure, I was doing it and for my own entertainment. And I think I even acted it out in my room or in front of a mirror, like speaking like if I was already on radio, like if I was Jennifer. And I think I was playing with this, with this idea for about three months. And then I got a call from my British friend, Sam. And he says, Kinga, they're starting a new radio and they want to have an English language program on it. And they asked me to do it. But I was like, um, I think it would be so much more fun to have a co-host, preferably a female. So I pitched to them the idea of me doing the radio show with you. Would you be interested? I was, I was speechless. Of course I was interested. Did I think I was good enough? No. Did I think that my English was good enough? Hell no. But did I want to do it? Hell yeah. And this honestly came so out of the blue, so unexpected. And the other funny thing is that the director of the whole radio was a guy who I used to listen to every evening as a kid, and I loved his radio shows, and, and I always imagined one day talking to him. And a couple of days later, I was at this new radio, standing there and talking to this guy about the English language radio show that I was about to start and host with my friend Sam. If I realistically had to think about that was it an option for me to ever have my own English language radio show in Budapest where we didn't even have a sufficient number of English speakers for a radio show? You know, I, I would have never guessed that it's, it was possible and I would have never guessed that even if it was possible, they would pick me. Like, I just, I never had that sort of contact or, or background or education or whatever, you know? So I'm just so glad that in my early 20s, I wasn't trying to solve this problem consciously and kind of talk myself out of the possibility. Because if you really think about logically, it, you know, it just, there's no way someone's going to start an English language radio show when in that tiny little city you already have one for that tiny community. And why the hell would they call me up to do it, right? So I'm just so glad that I didn't give a about the whole thing, you know? I was just focusing on daydreaming and doing it because it was entertaining for me and because I just enjoyed the feeling of it. So conclusion, dream. Dream big without concentrating on the lack of it and without trying to think that is it logical, is it possible that it could happen? No, just dream and dream big. Just dream yourself in the situation that feels good and watch what happens. Now, if you need help or guidance in the form of a guided meditation from me on how to get into this state, then I've got good news for you. I created a meditation about two years ago that was supposed to help people with just that, manifesting your dream job. I actually called it manifesting your next job because when I created it, I was really in desperate need of a job to help me finance my life. I had no time to figure out what my long-term dream job would be. I just had a list of requirements and a need for a job and I manifested it. And then I created this meditation to help others do the same. 
However, you have to know that it was one of my very early, very first guided meditations that I made for the public. And I have to admit, I'm not proud of it. It was way too fast, it's hard to follow, it has a lot of unnecessary elements, and I just generally think it's not a good meditation. I published it on my YouTube, so you can still go and find it, but I'm actually thinking of taking it down because it's just kind of embarrassing to me. But I want to give you the option to go and have a listen yourself, because if it works for you, then good, I'm happy, use it. Link in the description. I might take it down soon though, so if you like it, just you know try to download it, save it from YouTube so you have it. But I have an even better news, people. I just created a new version for the Manifest Your Next Job guided meditation. I changed the whole script, the speed, and I added some extra guidance for powerful future self-visualization. And I'm now truly happy with this one. And I sent it out to my friends as well to test it and, and they liked it too. And I have published the final product on my website so anyone can download it for a small fee. Link in the description. To those asking why I sell this for money instead of just publishing everything on my YouTube for free, because equipments to record and edit cost money, you know, because internet costs money, because a sound engineer costs money, and because I put so many days of work into this, and, and because this is what I do for work, and because I don't work for free. And I hope you don't work for free either. To those who decide to download it, thank you for supporting me. It means a lot. And if you are stuck, or need more guidance or help, feel free to contact me. If you want to have your own personal custom-made guided meditations, you can contact me on my website, link in the description. I would really appreciate if you liked, shared and subscribed. If you want to connect with me and like-minded people, come and join my Facebook group called Kinga Kramer and Friends, link in the description, where I share daily messages and videos that are more private and hopefully inspiring and helpful. Please understand that I do not respond to friend requests on my Facebook profile, I keep that strictly to my family and my close friends, but again, you are more than welcome to join my Facebook group, Kinga Kramer and Friends. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Take care, bye-bye.